Hey guys, how's it going? I am WWE Hall of Famer Lita, welcoming you to General Admission Rattling. How did you find a way to run from the city of the sun? You could have stayed, it's only over when the day is done. Hey everybody, welcome to beautiful Atlanta, Georgia for another episode of GAW Dark. We are here in the former home of the WCW Power Plant. Some of the legends that came through here whose names are not equaled by that of Stefford Drummond. I'm sorry, I just have to put it bluntly. Stefford would probably be the first to tell you that. One of the most bitter men you'll ever come across. But here he is teaming with Scott Danielson. The two of them made it into the tag team power rankings, the first ones ever prior to Bash at the Beach, but they did not get up to the level of being able to compete for the tag team championships now held of course by the titans well they get a chance to get back on track here tonight that's what gaw dark is for if you watched us last week you saw the debut of Derek cole one of the best athletes in the world and an absolute coup for gaw he is back in action tonight along with several other of our young extremely talented rookies but speaking of rookies, we got a rookie tag team in action once again. Andrew Wesley and Frankie Omega came just short when it came to fighting in the first tag team title champion or the first tag team championship match. They came up just short to War and the Titans. And of course, as I mentioned, the Titans went on to win that. Wesley and Omega still turned heads when it came to tag team wrestling. They were so impressive when it came to two singles guys teaming up. The chemistry that we saw from them was absolutely incredible. And uh, now they get this chance once again here. Atlanta is the place where runs turn around and we've seen, I mean, Midnight debuted here on GAW Dark and of course went on to win the Raw Championship and defend it successfully four times, best record in GAW. He made his debut here, Max Ultimate the same. He picked up his first victory on the last episode of Storm Chaser and we will see him once again later on tonight. I mean, the list goes on of people who jump-started a really good run in season two with uh, with a good win on GAW Dark. So we know what this is all about. Up under the shoulder goes Wesley and Stefford Drummond. He's taking it old school. Little airplane spin from Stefford. You know, back when he was uh, first started watching wrestling, the airplane spin would end matches. Couple big shoulder tackles, Wesley back to his feet and Wesley sends him back over. Little moment to breathe here for Andrew Wesley and maybe he can try to get himself a tag in, but Drummond comes off the top. Drops the double ax on top of the head. You can hear the Atlanta faithful and there is Andrew Wesley diving in, makes the tag. Here comes Frankie Omega. Drummond right back to his feet and Omega meets him. Beautiful combination. Omega's trained a little bit of MMA and there goes Drummond over the top. Frankie Omega is a big reason why these two have gelled so well. When you talk to people that have been around Frankie, all you hear is how hard he's worked to get to this point as a tag team wrestler. He has worked diligently. He's put in so many hours to studying, to understanding where he needs to be as a tag team wrestler, where he and Andrew need to be what he needs to do to improve. I mean, he has worked so hard to do that. And Wesley has as well, but Frankie has kind of taken the lead when it comes to the mental aspect of tag team wrestling. How he's gonna put the matches together. You know, what, the, what tactically they need to be able to do. Frankie Omega has done so much of that part of it. And you can see it really paying off here as Omega raises the knee right into the temple of Stefford Drummond. Drummond a long way away from his corner. And this is, like I tell you, tactically 
This is all the game plan of Frankie Omega here, knowing that they got to cut this ring in half, but Stafford Drummond comes right back, and Drummond just opens up some space. Get a, get a job here to Frankie. And now Drummond with the leg hooked. Wesley gets caught. Frankie kicks out. Scott Danielson hadn't been in this match at all, but he catches Andrew Wesley. Beautiful belly-to-belly -belly suplex. There goes Wesley out of the ring, and Frankie Omega get a job has absolutely stunned him, and here he comes back with a knee. Danielson in the area. Drummond might need to get himself a tag. Into the corner goes Frankie, and Omega fights his way out. Well done, and back into the corner goes Drummond. No Andrew Wesley, but Frankie makes a last-minute adjustment. Instead, comes in with the rising knee strike. Wesley to his feet, and Frankie Omega comes in with the knee. And now into the ring goes Danielson as Wesley meets him as well. And Frankie Omega has Danielson up on the shoulders. Omega theory to Scott Danielson. Wow, Danielson and Wesley, they had themselves an issue. Cover here to Stefford Drummond, and Drummond kicks out. And Wesley's going to go right back at Scott Danielson. Omega Theory from Frankie Omega dropped the king of old school. Into the corner he goes, and the referee has absolutely lost control of this thing. Up onto the shoulders, and Omega Theory to Stefford Drummond. The referee, he's just going to ignore Danielson and Wesley, and Omega with the leg go. <laughs> Stefford Drummond kicks out. What the hell's going on in this match? I don't even know. What's happening right now? Stefford Drummond kicks out of the Omega Theory. Scott Danielson and Andrew Wesley, the referee, just decided to ignore them. This is unbelievable. We got Drummond wearing the crimson mask. Danielson got his nose shattered on the Omega Theory. What the absolute hell is going on? Tag in, here comes Wesley. This is one of the absolute most insane matches. And it all happens right here in Atlanta on GAW Dark. Drummond has been the only legal man for his team, but obviously Scott Danielson's seen a little bit of action as well. You got to say that Omega and Wesley have the advantage right now. May not be the case for longer. Drummond gets him up. Maybe looking for get a job again, but Andrew Wesley out of it. Beautiful Frankensteiner. I'm surprised that we haven't seen the arm collector from Frankie Omega yet. Obviously, that is his most dangerous offensive maneuver. Wesley whips him in into the corner. Goes Drummond. Tag in. Omega's in the match here, and Wesley pops him up, Meteora! Oh, how well done is that? Cover from Frankie Omega, Scott Danielson too slow, and Omega and Wesley finish it off. Omega pushed Danielson off the apron, so Danielson couldn't get back in in time. What a match. Wesley and Omega back with a vengeance after not being able to come into the tag team title match. There is the Omega Theory to Scott Danielson. And that, at that point, that's when the referee absolutely lost control of this match. All four men were in the ring. And at one point, the referee just gave up on it. Here's the Omega Theory to Stefford Drummond. And you can see that both Wesley and Danielson are in the ring. Wesley giving that tarantula to the former Academy champion. The referee's like, all right, well, we got to cover here. We better just take care of that. Absolutely unreal. Here's, a, here's another look at the pop-up Meteora. And that is all Frankie Omega planning this match out. Tactically, these two are excellent. And... Wesley and Omega, you got to think that they are making a renewed push to those tag team championships currently held by the Titans. Coming up next, Max Ultimate picked up his first win just a couple days ago on Storm Chaser, and he's got another match here tonight. Well, Overload's had a pretty tough go of it in season two, let's be real. 
an 0 6 record for the former world's strongest man. But you know what? I don't know if he actually cares that much about it. You know, obviously, he's not getting any of the winner's purse, but you do get guaranteed money for fighting in GAW, and that's all Overload really cares about. Of course, he was in that rivalry with Lars Nightfall, ended in a street fight in brutal fashion when Overload was choke slammed on the solid concrete. As you can imagine, he was uh, out for a little while, returned in a three-way dance against Omega Woods and Ulysses Sky and had a brilliant exchange with Omega Woods, but ended up coming short there as well. Now, Max Ultimate's a guy who got his start on GAW Dark. So he comes in and his first match was about two months ago, I believe. And he came in and, and impressed a lot of people with his athleticism. A lot of people were saying, man, you know, this guy, this guy could really have something. But, you know, he wasn't picking up the wins. He was still getting his experience. And then he comes in and uh, teams up against uh, Eddie Hernandez and Yunsan Park. And obviously he turned a lot of heads there. He was so impressive. Got attacked by Jackal before a match with the up and coming Mexican superstar. Made his return this past Monday, got his first win, and now he's got the opportunity to do it again. So let's see what the young man can do here. Similar color scheme as well from Max Ultimate and Overload. That seems to be a theme here. Overload comes down on the arm, and what is going to be the focus of attack for Ultimate? Is he gonna try to go for the legs of the bigger man? Now we've seen that strategy work in a, in a lot of instances, but sometimes you get too attached to that. And when you talk about ultimate, you talk about the max damage, the butterfly suplex he used to beat Stafford Drummond. So much of it of the attack is going to be focused around the arms and back. So I wonder if he's gonna take that strategy. Certainly early on went for a couple attacks on the arms of Overload. Obviously, Overload is so dependent on his arms. The former world's strongest man, and if you ever watch those competitions, arm strength is a big part of it. And here is where maybe weakening those arms might have helped Max Ultimate Overload just putting that claw in right on the shoulder. And maybe Ultimate avoided some of the worst of the damage. Overload just tossing him around. We know how strong Overload is, but we also know that when the match gets long, when he starts to have, when he starts to fall behind, you know, sometimes he does kind of lose focus a little bit, loses his motivation. We know that that tends to happen with the former world's strongest man. So is it gonna happen again here? Max Ultimate, oh, beautiful. Overload was looking for the slam and Ultimate turns it into a DDT. Absolutely gorgeous. Overload to his feet and Ultimate from behind. Ultimate lifts him up onto the shoulders. Max damage. Oh, that was absolutely picturesque. Max Ultimate leg hooked and Overload kicks out. I can't believe the max damage didn't get it done, but ultimate, how well done was that? Transitioning into the DDT, and now up top he goes. He's got a long way to go, and Overload just sends him to the ground. Ultimate wasn't gonna quite make it there, and Overload just shoulder tackles him right out of the air, and that is the strength of the giant Overload. Somehow able to withstand the max damage, but again, we've seen with ultimate float over neckbreaker that he is willing to continue to attack once his initial plan to win the match does not go correctly. And that's actually something that he has really improved on since he first came here. We saw early on that, you know, the max damage, it didn't always work for him. Overload now, Vader bomb from Overload. Cover here from the big man, ultimate on his back and ultimate kicks out. So we saw that, you know, the max damage didn't always get the job done for ultimate and he would kind of be lost after that.
but apparently he's gone back to the drawing board and he has really improved his game. So now when that max damage doesn't get the job done, ultimate is prepared and here he comes off the springboard with a kick, finds its mark on the temple of overload and that's just one of the many maneuvers that max ultimate can use. Leg hooked and max ultimate wins. And that just goes to show you how good Max Ultimate has gotten in his time off. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone learn as quickly as Max Ultimate. From that attack by Jackal. And when you look at when that was, that was back in episode nine of Storm Chaser. So you're talking about about two months ago now, that attack and you know, Jackal, I think, really just lit a fire under Max Ultimate. Ultimate has really uh, rethought his game, where he needs to be, what he needs to be able to do in order to win at this level. And now with two straight wins, two wins in three days for Max Ultimate, apparently something is working for the young man from Boston. Congratulations to him. He's on the form of his life, and I can't wait to see where he goes next. Well, we got another tag team match here, and it features none other than the former GAW Tag Team Champions, the Gorillas of Destiny. And I got to be honest, you know, G.O.D., they have not really uh, gotten to the level uh, that they would have hoped. You talk about guys that carry the Tag Team Championships into uh, Nitro 10 and battled the Usos in a brilliant match, a match that we've been waiting for for a long time, a dream match. G.O.D. came up short, and I think mentally it just hasn't done them a whole lot of good. Uh, they've been splitting time between here and Japan, so they just haven't been able to really find themselves again in G.A.W. Uh, so we'll see if, uh, again, this is what Dark is so useful for. We'll see if G.O.D. can come back and, and get to the level that they feel like they should be at. we got here Bo Dallas Curtis Axel two guys that uh, have a little bit of a cult following surrounding them the B team they've been working their way around the independent scene for the better part of the last year and have impressed enough people that they have showed up here in general admission wrestling I uh, these are not guys that I would have expected <laughs> to, to show up here in GAW, but here they are. Uh, wow, I don't know what to say. Uh, this is, I guess, a dream match. I guess you could call it that. B team and GOD. Uh, how do Tamatonga, Tongaloa react to this? I don't know. Let's get to it. Wow, Tamatonga in Bo Dallas to start things off. And, uh, I mean, I don't even know what to say. These guys made their names over in uh, WWE. And, you know, they, uh, again, just got that cult following that has followed them ever since. And like I said, they've been kind of touring around the independent scene for the last year or so and these guys you know as as much of as much of a a a funny group they are and you know talking to them uh just how how funny they are as people uh they do take wrestling very seriously and they do know what they're doing so you know they're not just they're not just guys that you know have a big following on twitter or whatever uh, they they really know what's going on. Curtis Axel into the match for the first time here. Axel, I, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but Axel had a pretty long, uh, drawn-out legal battle with WWE for the rights to his name. 
So that was something that really kept him away from being able to do a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of matches that he would have otherwise done while fighting that legal battle. And it ends up being actually a pretty landmark case when it comes to uh, when it comes to trademarks and copyrights on names. And so Curtis Axel will be recognized for, for doing that. Tamatonga to his feet and Axel, I think, didn't see him coming. Tamatonga, of course, paired with brother Tongaloa, seven-time IWGP Tag Team Champions. And, of course, former GAW Tag Team Champions as well. The long history of GAW Tag Team Champions goes back to some of the greatest teams of all time. The Golden Lovers, the Young Bucks, the Hardy Boys, the Motor City Machine Guns, Team 3D, the Steiner Brothers. I mean, we're talking about some of the, the Rock and Roll Express, the Briscoes. You are talking about some of the greatest of all time. And if you want to see a full list of tag team champions in GAW, just head on over to our website, General Admission Wrestling. Dot com and you can see every tag team champion going back to our first title holders back in 2006 it was the rock and roll express beating aj styles and tomco back on the very first episode of storm it was called storm a new era in july of 2006 to his feet comes Tamatonga and now Curtis Axel looking for a neck breaker and Axel turns him right around. Face breaker from Curtis Axel. Cover here and Tongaloa is able to break things up. What a performance early on from the B team. I can't really say that the B team are uh, are similar to some of the champions that we've seen in GAW but uh, you know, maybe this is the start of something new here for Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Tamatonga's actually not gotten a lot of offense in here. It's very surprising. I haven't seen Tamatonga look this helpless in a while, but Tamatonga answers gun stun. Drops Curtis Axel, and now suddenly the B team are in trouble, and Bo Dallas is there just in time. Tama Tonga with a gun stun. And suddenly we've got ourselves a match. Drop kick off the apron. And now suddenly Curtis Axel working two on one. We'll see if he can do something here as he pulls Tama Tonga through and Curtis Axel with a neck breaker through the ropes. G.O.D. just looking to build back to that level where they can become tag team champions once again. The record for tag team title reigns is, is uh, four, currently held by the Motor City Machine Guns and the Young Bucks. The Usos now have two separate reigns and G.O.D. hoping to get their second here fairly soon. TMDK also have their eyes on the tag team championships as well. So much, uh, so much of the offense now focused around the neck of Tamatonga. And he's had that neck surgically repaired before, so that's actually pretty smart here from the B team. And now Bo Dallas up onto the second rope and drops the elbow. Oh my God, elbow drop, backbreaker combination. So B team apparently settling in quite well here to general admission wrestling. Can't say I would have expected it, but here's what we got in Tamatonga almost instinctually flies in with a spear. You gotta get a tag in now, Tema. Been in the match for over five minutes. And he soaked up a whole lot of punishment from the two debutantes. And let's talk about the wrestlers that have debuted over the last week and a half. You have Boleska Pierce beating uh, Academy Women's Champion Catherine Sakamoto on her first night. You got Ramon Gutierrez and Derek Cole debuting on Dark last week. You've got Damian Martinez debuting on uh, on Storm this past Friday. And now here you have the B team. 
I mean, we are welcoming all kinds of new names and new faces to GAW. Beautiful slam from Bo Dallas. And now Tamatonga is in trouble. Tongaloa is not going to make it. And somehow, the B team have won in their debut. What is the tag team matches tonight? I mean, wow. Credit to the B team. Wow. It's unreal. The B team somehow have won their debut against the legendary Gorillas of Destiny. <laughs> this sometimes folks you just gotta laugh. The B team have come in and somehow they've picked up a win. Anything can happen on GAW Dark. Congratulations to these two. Well, Ulysses Sky, the last time we saw him was in that three-way dance a couple weeks ago on Storm Chaser, came up short to Omega Woods, who ended up winning that and then went on to challenge um, uh, Yun Son Park. And if you watched uh, Storm Chaser this past Monday, then you'll know that Yun Son Park returns next week to respond to Omega Woods. So that one's going to be really exciting. But as for Ulysses Sky, he's now got an opportunity to come back with a win uh, after that disappointing performance. But I got to tell you this, folks. Uh, it will not be easy given the man that he is facing tonight. We saw Derek Cole last week on Dark make his debut in the main event and impressed everyone with an incredible match against Stefford Drummond. Cole ended up winning that match to start his GAW career off with a win. And last, this past Monday, we got to take a look uh, more uh, in depth of Derek Cole, where he's from, what he's about, what he's been through, and he is such an interesting case. He has a story unlike anyone in GAW, anyone in wrestling, I think. And we're so happy to have him here. As I keep saying, it's an absolute coup for us to bring him after his extensive background in professional sports, his background in underground wrestling, uh, both as a tag team and as a singles competitor. For us to have him here is absolutely just uh just fantastic to bring him in and uh you know go back and watch our video about him on this past monday's storm chaser go back and learn about him why he wears uh that jacket with kobe bryant and his daughter uh Derek cole such an incredible story and i'm glad to see him back in action Cole keeping the jersey on today for, for this match with Ulysses Sky and comes in with a spear. Obviously, Cole has a whole lot of uh, devastating offense. Now he's got the Cole cut, the, uh, the Cole cut, which I mistakenly referred to as the All-American uh, on last week's Dark, so I do apologize for that. The Cole cut is what put Stefford Drummond away. He's got the Heisman kick as well. I mean, this guy, just an unbelievable athlete. And what impresses me so much about Cole is that not only is he a great athlete, but he uses his athleticism so well. He doesn't, he's not just, you know, jumping out of the gym constantly. Mahi Stroll here from, from Ulysses Sky into the cover, and Derek Cole kicks out. So he's not just using his athleticism to jump out the gym and do the springboards, come off the top rope and all that kind of stuff. He uses his athleticism to just be quicker than his opponents. And that's actually something done by someone else in the GAW Academy. Our current champion, Kurt Andrews, is well known for doing that. You know, tremendously athletic, but he uses it uh, to you know,
know, set up all of his offense to just be too quick for his opponents to answer. So when you're talking about having a very similar game to the current Academy champion, I think uh, Derek Cole might be in a pretty good situation. Leg Lariat from Cole, and you can see, I mean, just, just a vertical leap. Ulysses Sky is six foot four. So just a vertical leap like that is, I mean, no one else can do what Derek Cole can do. And now drops Ulysses Sky under the knee and Cole comes in, slides in, knee right to the ribs. Cole's a brawler as well. We know that he can strike with the best of them and that's something that he's really done a good, hang on, Ulysses Sky. Ulysses Sky brought himself a baseball bat into this match and Sky just waving it over the head of Darren Cole and Ulysses Sky with a baseball bat right to the face. What is he doing? Ulysses Sky took the DQ. What is happening? Well, Ulysses Sky, for some reason, just decides to take an intentional disqualification against Derek Cole. I have no idea what's going through his mind right now, but uh, uh, I guess uh, I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even going to try to come up with an explanation for that. Derek Cole, I can't imagine, is feeling too good about it. Just in his second match in GAW. He's feeling great, definitely had the advantage over Sky, and uh, it gets thrown out after an intentional disqualification. So we'll see how Jason Parker decides to deal with that. Here is Queen Alexia, uh, sensational young rookie, 4-0 so far in season two. She has looked absolutely tremendous, and she is looking to continue that here. Kristen Sakamoto has been somewhat overshadowed by the accomplishments of her sister. Of course, Catherine, the current Academy Women's Champion and embroiled in a rivalry with Baleska Pierce right now after Pierce beat Catherine her first night as champ. So let's see what Kristen can bring to the table here as, uh, you know, her sister obviously having so much success, but Kristen comes from an incredible background in athletics herself. She is no slouch. Let's see what she can do against the undefeated rookie. Alexia is going to try to start out hot, and that's going to be the right situation. That's going to be the right decision against Kristen Sakamoto. Kristen with some Kawada kicks onto a grounded Alexia. And the rookie has made a name for herself because of her athleticism and specifically her incredible strength for her size. Probably the smallest competitor we have in GAW, but she has just unbelievable strength. We saw her beat Suzuki, who she was giving up probably about a foot and a hundred pounds to, and she ends up beating her, and obviously she's at a size disadvantage once again with Kristen Sakamoto. Kristen's going to try to use the power here, as we would expect. Nice arm drag to answer, and Alexia, when is she going to be able to turn it on? When is, you know, that, that show of strength coming? Because you know it will. And Kristen, she's got to try to put her away quickly here. That's the only option against someone as athletic as Queen Alexia. And now here is the strength. Belly to belly suplex from Queen Alexia and the amount of power it takes to drive down someone that much bigger, unbelievable. I'm just getting word here from Jason Parker. He was watching that whole display with Ulysses Sky and Derek Cole, and Parker had a quick conversation with Cole backstage. Next week on GAW Dark, Derek Cole has requested that Ulysses Sky not be suspended. Instead, the two will go at it in a no disqualification match. And we will also hear from Derek Cole on this whole attack. So good for Derek Cole. He wants to continue this thing. He wants to keep rolling. And I cannot wait for a no DQ match against uh, Ulysses Sky coming up next week on Dark.
Queen Alexia now up to the top, and here is the incredible strength of Queen Alexia. Superplex from the top. Think about the core strength it takes to rip Kristen Sakamoto over the top rope and down, clearly against her will. No one wants to face that kind of drop. So that is just another example of the strength of Queen Alexia. She never needs to offer us more, but she always does. Kristen is going to have the advantage here when it comes to striking, given Kristen's MMA background. And now up to the top she goes. Obviously, her sister Catherine is able to work up there, but Kristen comes down with the elbow drop and it misses. Alexia answers, fires away with the right, and now Alexia with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Once again, Queen Alexia, leg hooked, incredible strength from the rookie, and Alexia picks up her fifth win. Wow, how well done is that from Queen Alexia? And that gives the young rookie just 20 years old. She is now tied for the most wins of any woman in the GAW Academy. Catherine Sakamoto at five and two, and now Queen Alexia at five and oh. Can you believe that? You're talking about a rookie with a better record, a better winning percentage with the same number of wins than the champ herself. Alexia has been on absolute fire, and what is next for her? I hope it's something big. I can imagine it certainly is. Coming up next is our main event of this Wednesday's show. Matt Riddle is back in action. So Matt Riddle, we saw him last take on Aleister Black with the world title on the line. And he came up short in that match, but obviously no shame in that given uh, Alistair Black's incredible title reign, how good he's been and uh, how unbeatable he's been. So Matt Riddle did come up short in that situation and that's the last time that we saw him. But Riddle, you know, knew, he has been reinvented since his match with Keith Lee. Uh, and, you know, Keith Lee obviously took it so hard that he had to stand up to his former tag team partner, former best friend. Matt Riddle has gone basically the opposite direction in that Riddle looks as dangerous as he ever has. The former Intercontinental Champion, Matt Hardy won the IC title uh, last season when he joined up with the evil forces of Alpha. And of course, that means that he uh, was not, uh, I guess you would say, respectful of the title the same way that we've seen from past Intercontinental Champions. The belt has such a great lineage and the great champions in its history Guys like Walter, who, defend, who who held the title for, you know, 500 days. Uh, Drew McIntyre, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, the first champion, AJ Styles. So that great lineage of champions, Matt Hardy didn't exactly do it a whole lot of good when he was the champion. His reign will clock in at 140 days, just two defenses of the belt, but you know, Hardy now, I think he'd be the first to tell you he's a different man. Now, no longer teamed with Alpha. He, you know, has just a different outlook on the sport of pro wrestling. And it means that, you know, he might be a little bit more of a threat to Matt Riddle in this main event. At least I hope that's the case. I think Matt Riddle, I'd love to see him get knocked down a peg or two, given his arrogance coming back, challenging Aleister Black, challenging Walter. So I hope that uh, that Matt Riddle, you know, does get knocked down a peg or two with that confidence. We'll see if it's going to work out that way. Matt Riddle is his offense has become so much more strike based than uh, than we were used to seeing from him before. And again, 
you know, just kind of leaning back into that MMA background that, that he does possess. Um, I think uh, when it comes to Matt Riddle, he has just uh, understood, he's really come to understand that his background in MMA gave, it gives him such an advantage over, you know, most of the guys that he faces because a lot of these guys, you know, they come from amateur wrestling backgrounds or pro wrestling backgrounds. So MMA is really a unique characteristic among a lot of wrestlers. I mean, Matt Hardy does not have that same kind of skill set when it comes to his background in pro wrestling. So I think Matt Riddle just sat down and said, you know, what can I do that a lot of other wrestlers can't? And that is uh, that mixed martial arts style. Some people call it strong style. Uh, you know, Matt Riddle obviously was uh, is a progenitor of that. Let's see what Matt Hardy can do as Hardy just trying to grind down his opponent here. This is probably smart, trying to work on the joints of Riddle, trying to make him feel a little bit of that pain. And at some point, you should probably turn your attention to the knees. We know that Riddle has uh, began to use his knee strikes for devastating effect and he keeps that plastic pad on both of his knees. Riddle steps through and Matt Riddle with a sharpshooter here. Scorpion death lock from Matt Riddle and look at how far back he's sitting on that. That is not a submission hold I have ever seen him use but that just goes to show you when you come from that mixed martial arts background you can uh, you can have you know a lot a, a lot more variance when it comes to your submission game. Sent on from Matt, and now Riddle gets Matt Hardy up onto the shoulders, and Matt Riddle go to sleep. Very aptly named because I think it put Matt Hardy to sleep. Matt Riddle in this main event gets a fairly simple win over the former Intercontinental and Tag Team Champion. Matt Hardy has had as much success as you could ask for in general admission wrestling. And Matt Riddle just, as you can see, puts him to sleep. What a performance. Matt Riddle looking as good as you could ask for here in this main event of Dark. And I wanted Matt Hardy to maybe take him down a peg when it comes to his arrogance. And uh, I think his arrogance, if anything, might have gone up a level here for Matt Riddle. Who knows what's to come next for the dangerous Matt Riddle. Folks, thank you so much for joining us here in Atlanta on this episode of GAW Dark. Coming up next Friday is, of course, Friday Night Storm. We will see the return of Damian Martinez. Matt Riddle will be in action, and our main event sees Cody Rhodes taking on Zack Sabre Jr. You cannot miss that, folks. We will see you on Friday.